Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. All right, I think we can get started. Um, let me see. The recording is already in progress. Yeah. Okay. So, welcome everyone to the Earthstream JavaScript working group call of April 13th. Um, I need to remember you to abide by the Pledge Code of Conduct and the uh, antitrust policy. Um, if you would like to add yourself to the attendees list, feel free to do so. Um, I'll post the link in the chat again. Um, is there anyone new here that would like to introduce themselves or share what you're working on? Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Francisco. I'm from Near Farm. I'm a DevOps engineer. And I've, I've been working on this project with Near Farm that is for creating a digital identity for a new I, uh, EU national government. Uh, I'm mostly interested in understanding some of the workings of the two to properly uh, create infrastructure and network and some any details that might be interesting. Cool. Good to have you here. And uh, yeah, maybe if we have time uh, for some questions at the end, you, uh, uh, we, can, we can help you answer them. All right, then we can move on to the um, agenda for today or well, actually status updates. Are there anything we want to report on for today? Um, I don't know if the bifold call was this week. Uh, yeah, there was a bifold call this week, but it was uh, pretty short, uh, similar to the update here. Unless Ariel has uh, more to add on. Okay, I don't think so. Um, okay, cool. Then. Um... I think on the PR that we opened, um, there, uh, well, there's a lot of merge conflict, but um, it is ready and working. Um, uh, we also tested it with revocation and everything. It's just there are some issues we're experiencing with the migration script in React Native, which we aren't experiencing in Node.js. So uh, uh, yeah, need to dig deeper in that. It's it's a bit hard to. Uh, uh, debug these lower level stuff in, in React Native uh, um, sometimes. But yeah, that's basically the last thing we need to do. Um, I know there has been um, a lot of work also on supporting older Android versions. Baron, do you know the status of that? I know there was a lot of discussion, but... Um, yeah, yeah, that's going quite well. Um, I think there's support for Android 6 for NVDR, I think. Uh, but we also got a new issue with, um, I think, for emulators uh, using x86-64 uh, for Edgar. There seems to be a symbol missing again, so we might have to do also some investigation for um, Oscar. But as long as we have the images, um, adding support for Oscar and Anocreds would be fairly fairly easy. Uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 going very well. It's a lot better than I expected, so that's uh, that's very good. Cool. Okay. Yeah. And so the new issue with the missing some symbols 
uh, arise when using the new build strategy or was that already there? No, I, I think it was already there, um, but we like we we mainly tested it on a Mac OS host and then I think it picks the ARG64 image uh, and there was an issue with the x86-64 image. So it might have picked um, one for us that works, but if you are on Linux or Windows or something, it picks the wrong image and then it doesn't work. So it's a bit of a, a weird issue that needs a bit of debugging. Okay, cool. Well, at least one issue resolved. Um, uh, Eris called. Yeah, just, just, just a, a comment oh, on that yeah. because I am. I also had a problem with the with the Ascar on eight, eight, uh, x eighty six because of the of some of the dependency on 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 SQ I think. But I I managed to 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 make it work in my emulators in, under Linux at least. I don't know I don't know about about uh, Mac OS. But I think Which, I, uh, I, 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 I I made a comment. Do you remember that uh, Hagam the document that you yeah. made? Isn't there something about that? Because I, I remember that I. Um, which which Android API did you use? Because the issue occurs on anything above thirty. I'm using from from Android seven. It work. It's working. Yeah. Um, okay. Then I think you might be below thirty. If you could try uh, with an emulator on Android like thirty one or the Android API or something, what it's called. Um, and if that still works, because if that still works, there might be some local issues. Uh, but I can echo, I'll send you a message afterwards about it. Okay. Okay, I will check. Um, let me see. This is the, the HackMD document you were talking about, right, uh, Ariel? Yeah, I don't remember if I, if I, ah, yes, yeah. So oh, there's a thing related to Ascar not working in x86-64 architecture. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that what I did was to to use uh, an, an older NDK, so uh, I couldn't. I I do it, I do it locally in my in my computer. And uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think that that is the, the symbol, yeah. Um, and a thing with the NDK is, is I think they added support for um, AR64 or so for uh, M1 silicon um, in NDK24. So I have to think about if that will collide if we go to a lower NDK and then it would still work on both uh, architectures. Um, but if this is a fix, then we should definitely just do it like this. Uh, as long as we don't break up something else in the meanwhile. Yeah, okay. I'll uh, post a link here. Uh, we should probably also share that with uh, um, Jason and Claesio. Okay. Cool. Anything else on the five volt shared components React Native thing? Okay. Uh, Eris call. I think this was from last week, right? Yeah. Uh, so the did the Eris call yesterday go through? And did anyone attend? Guess not. Um, then let's move on. I think this one for um, I know there's going to be a Bitcoin V2 connected on. I don't think we'll be able to participate as part of like AFJ, right? Uh, uh, I don't think anyone has updated it to work with like the latest stuff. Or have you looked at this, Ariel? No, no, no. Fortunately, we have some other other issues, as you may know. <laughs> But yeah, that actually I I was yesterday on the on the areas call, and now that you're mentioning the the connection donor, I I remember because it was a very little one, 
it was, it was a short one. I mean, it was about 20 minutes or so. Uh, and the, I, I think the only thing that we, we discussed yesterday was about the release of the DITCOM uh, 2.1 uh, that introduces a, uh, some, actually what some said was that uh, they will uh, do that release after the I IW, so uh, just to 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 not add uh, more confusions on this uh, connected on, but uh, there are there are a few minor changes. It's it's not something very re super relevant, but uh, but yeah, uh, there will be an, an update that of course will need to be supported by the by the libraries. It it, it was mo mostly about having a. The, the body the, the body field will be optional now because there are a lot of messages that uh, well do not need any body because it with the type is, is enough and also uh, about the service endpoint that uh, uh, before 2.1 uh, it needed to be a, an array of or, or list of uh, of endpoints, uh, and now it can be an either an, an array, an array, or um, a single endpoint. Cool. Okay. And aren't these breaking changes in, in then or? Well. I... It depends. <laughs> I think no, but, but I, I think that if if uh, if a library is only accepting an a list as, an, as a service endpoint, for instance, and it will get uh, a single object, I think probably it will will break, right? And the same with the body. Yeah. Maybe if they if it does some uh, strict validation about the the body to exist, even if it's empty. It it might fail. So yeah. there are simple changes, but but probably they, they they will be needed to to be implemented to to make it work. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Cool. Then, um, yeah, the shared components we have been making like updates when we when we see them. I think most bugs have been, uh, um, yeah, fixed now um probably some bugs to be uh fixed with the revocation implementation from uh Ariel um but yeah that's just going steady I think whenever we have like the I think when we have the migration stuff working in react native then we can make the like the stable releases for all of them but I think the the dev releases now are already quite stable uh yeah um okay then for the agenda um i added zero for zero not sure if we want to discuss anything in specific for zero for zero um i have a legacy versus unqualified identifier uh issue where we have something we how we want to approach it for now for zero for zero release and then uh long term what we want to do and uh seeing yeah m maybe getting some feedback on that approach um something about the checked integration being merged i don't know if we have to discuss it uh, in very much detail um uh, dave from the check team will give a a demo soon of this um and oh, i see this is from last week uh, did anything come out of this like do we want to discuss this in more detail or does an issue need to be opened from this or uh because I, I i missed last week's meeting so curious if there's anything we need to do still on this or can I just remove it? Um, I I think it, it can be removed. I, we didn't really have a lot to discuss. So I was more curious um, about like, oh, well, we created all these modules now and it's, it's very nice, but it also makes it like infinitely more complex. Uh, and I was mainly wondering if people already use the alpha versions um, and just see if they found it more complex and how we can make it yeah, as simple as possible for people to get started like before like you just you you create a label for an agent and you're almost done you maybe some wallet configuration and now it's a whole lot more uh, so what can we do there um 
it's not really fixed yet, but uh, maybe if there's some time left over and people used 040, they can talk about it. But uh, yeah, might be good to track it in an issue or discussion or something. Yeah, cool. Uh, I think we have like an issue. It's not oh, it's the wrong repo. Um, it's not specifically for um, like how to, it's on. Um, Yeah, uh, I think this is one, like simple agent setup with presets is one way. It's not really focused on like, it's too complex now, but more like with what maybe would work. Um, I think we can track it here, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, I think that's good. I now see the we've checked, which is uh, kind of cool to do it like that with chart components. I'll also <laughs> probably think about it and see if we can come up with something that is easy to use. Uh, and a bit smaller than the like hundred line object. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um. Cool. Then, any other things we need to add, uh, Ariel? Do we want to discuss your verification PR and maybe uh, some thoughts, questions you have? Or okay, okay. If if, if we we have time, it's it will, it will be nice. Yeah. Cool, I think it would be a good one to discuss. Okay, then uh, I think we can get to this one a bit later on. I'm, I want to start with the legacy versus unqualified uh, identifiers. Um, currently, it's a bit broken in AFJ in like the mix between qualified and unqualified identifiers. And uh, if you're using the new Anocrats RS library, uh, you actually can't issue currently using unqualified identifiers in the latest alpha, which is not very nice. You can only use the qualified ones. And the reason for that is that the schema and credential definition records internally are stored with um, qualified identifiers. And that allows us to know like which ledger a schema or credential definition belongs to. Um, and, um, but that also means that uh, you can't use them with legacy identifiers because then it can't find the credential definition record or schema record in storage. Um, so I wrote something out here on what would work, which is kind of complex, but it basically means you can use them interchangeably. And it means if you, um, it like further than issuing with both, but it means if you receive a credential in the unqualified format, we'll actually store it using the qualified format. So we know which ledger a credential belongs to. Um, and you can also share it in both formats. So if you get a request for unqualified identifiers, you can share it if you get it for a qualified indie. It's only indie then, because those are interchangeably basically. Um, uh, you can also share it. Um, but that requires some, yeah, more complex implementation because basically for all credentials that are bound to an indie network, um, we need to support both identifiers, uh, which is the unqualified legacy identifier and the did indie identifier, um, which is quite some work and we don't want to hold up the 040 release any longer. So um, what, uh, we came on in a discussion um, is that for now, um, we do not support qualified and unqualified identifiers interchangeably. Um, and that means if you, you can issue with both qualified and unqualified, um, but if you receive a credential in qualified format, you can only use it um, uh, later to share it uh, when a proof request is made for the qualified format. So you can't use them interchangeably, um, which I think qualified identi indie identifiers aren't used that much yet. Um, and um, yeah, so you can receive both, uh, but you can't use them interchangeably. And I think for now, this is a simpler change because basically the only thing we need to do is uh, for the schema and credential definition ID, um, we need to store the legacy or the unqualified um, um, identifier. And that means when I want to issue a credential, uh, I use um, 
with an unqualified identifier, it will know how to find the, the credential definition record, which actually has the qualified or the full DIT in the um, identifier. Um, we thought then this is quite simple. I have this like almost implemented locally. So I hope to have that PR uh, in by today. And I think that's basically the last thing we need to do then for the zero for zero release. Um, it does mean you can't use them with unqualified um, or like interchangeably. And that's something we want to do um, later on is um, we support querying for records um, that are stored with qualifiers using unqualified. So you can use them in any uh, combination and we'll create a migration script that can basically migrate all unqualified um, Anocred credentials to a uh, DIT in the qualified identifiers. So we also know how to store, um, like, yeah, we can store which ledger a credential is associated with. Um, so one thing here is that this will be a bit more complex process because you can't infer the ledger stored on based on um, just the credential. So we would need to have to fetch data from the ledgers to know which it belongs to. Uh, so that will be a separate migration script you can choose to run um, in your wallet. Um, yeah, so that's the idea. Um, I think maybe a few questions is, A, uh, do people think this, like the short-term approach for zero for zero is, is good? And B, um, do people think the added complexity uh, of this to support the like the unqualified and did in the identifiers interchangeably um, is worth like the complexity to support that or do people think like it's okay to not support them interchangeably and really see them as separate credentials I think for, for me, it's okay to not not use them interchangeably. I mean, it would be nice, but I think we talked about it before and there it is, uh, in my opinion, just not nah, too complex to edit. And also if we want to do it before 040, it's another blocker before that release. Um, if we were to edit later in the non-breaking way, that might be nice. Um, but for me, yeah, I I think it would be just be good to get 040 out especially if it doesn't add that much value that, that I know of uh, with uh, qualified identifiers not being used that much. Yeah, yeah, I mean, for like the, uh, uh, this as the short term, but I mean, like the, the, the B was more like in the long term, do we want to add it? So not for zero for zero, but do we want to add it at all? Mm. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, if 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 someone wants to add it in like a like a module or an extendable way, then I think that's fine. Um, but I, yeah, as, as if there's a need for it, I don't think we have, we should add it. If there's no need for it, that's I guess what it comes down to. <laughs> but I'm I'm okay with with adding it as long as it doesn't pollute um, uh, the modules that we have now. Uh, and that's a lot of backwards compatibility, uh, maintenance, legacy issues like that. That's yeah. my only concern really. Yeah, I think it will add some, like quite some, it, all the logic would need to be added to like the, the core modules. Uh, so the generic anoncrets because it's very, yeah, specific behavior. Um, but I think it may be justifiable because it's, part of the Anoncred specification to have those different, uh, like have the legacy identifiers supported also. Um, I just think what I'm worried about is that people will have, like people will start, will keep continuing issuing credentials using unqualified identifiers for quite some while still and not being able to use them interchangeably will mean that all those credentials will never be able to be used with did in the identifier. So if I make proof requests, I always will need to include the legacy. And 
identifiers. And I think it may even like make the migration path to qualified identifiers harder because if the credentials in the wallet can only be used with unqualified identifiers, people have a, a restriction on updating to the new type of identifier because they can't use the new type of identifiers for credentials that have been issued using unqualified identifiers. Um, that's a bit of my worry, I think, with not supporting them interchangeably. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense. Um, yeah, I wouldn't really, wouldn't really want people not to update because we don't support their, their formats or something. And then it will just <laughs> be stuck on an old version, uh, which is not very, very good behavior, I guess. Um, yeah. I think this has the most impact on um, mobile wallets, probably like holder wallets. Is someone here that has an opinion on that from like a, a mobile holder wallet perspective? Okay, then um, I think for now, for zero for zero, we're going to do take this approach that allows to at least issue uh, with both. So you can still issue with for unqualified um, identifiers. Um, and at a later stage, we can look at like supporting them interchangeably and, and the effort required to do that. But it, it, uh, I think, yeah, experience said it shouldn't hold up the zero for zero release. Okay, then next topic, verification PR from Ariel. Um, do you want to share a screen, Ariel, or should I open a PR or what, what's best? Yeah, maybe I can, I can share a screen a little bit more. Let me see if I can. Um, Okay, you can you see the screen right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, basically, the the uh, the the goal of of this PR was to well, is to um, to give us a way of uh, issuing revocable credentials, as the, as the title says. But at least in a basic way, because it's the, the process of issuing a, a revocable credential is not uh, very simple in, in the sense that it's not just that you need to put a boolean flag to true and that's it because uh, in order to 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 issue revocable credentials you will need to apart from uh, creating a, a schema and credential definition you also need to register a revocation registry definition, the initial revocation status list, and also maybe something that is quite important and not so evident, at least from the Anon credits specification, is that you will need to upload somewhere details file. So uh, basically what the this uh, PR uh, adds is, uh, the the API is a method to create and store these uh, objects uh, for revocation registry definition and revocation status list, and also uh, improves a little bit the interface of uh, that we already we already have for managing the tails files. Uh, because at, at the moment we we have a simple utility method to 
to download the files and, and, and store it in the in the cache, uh, in the agent cache. And now uh, it has been extended to, to have an interface that allows you to not only download it, download the, the details file from somewhere, but also to upload it using the server you have or, or whatever. Um, so uh, how does it work? I will probably, maybe if I, if I look at the, the tests we, we have, maybe it's a bit more clear. We have a, uh, let me see. Okay. Well, the implementation right now is, uh, is ge generic in the sense that uh, all the changes have been added to the Anon Crets module and also uh, on the Anon Crets RS module, but uh, there is not any implementation yet for in the SDK or in the VDR. Uh, and of course I checked because it's, it has been merged uh, today. Uh, but the idea is that it, it will be quite straightforward to implement it for, for Cardano or TDWeb, which is, which is the, the method I'm, I'm, I'm using right now. Uh, so we have the, the tests uh, here. So um, let me see. So but basically when, in order to, to create the credentials and, uh, and to, to do the, 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 to all the, the protocol exchange uh, about the issue credentials, it's exactly the same as it is right now. Um, and then the, the, the difference is that when you want to, to revoke a credential, what you need to do is to, um, to call the Anon Crets API to do the update of the revocation status list. And then you pass it, you, you pass to it the, the revocation registry definition ID uh, and the indexes of the credentials you want to, to revoke. So this in, in this step, what the framework will do is to, to create a new a new entry. Uh, on the on the VDR, and then uh, if you you want to to send it the the notification of the of the revocation, well, you 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 can call the credentials API to do so for each connection associated to uh, each credential you you want to oh you 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 have revoked. So this is something different from from what I have seen on the on Akapai that. Where, because I think that Akapai does uh, several steps uh, at once, uh, but in this case uh, we are using it separately to mostly to 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 have a a, a a simpler state management. Because my my main concern was what happens is if i can i can do the the, the update of the revocation list but uh, the notification fails so uh, that, that that's why it's uh, quite uh, let's say primitive right now or i don't know if primitive but uh, it's modular and, and it's 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 made in a way that maybe the the, the logic uh, of the retrying and, and, and so and, and, and all this that stuff um, have to be managed on on the the controller side. And for the for the tails for the tails file, what I added well, you will see the that we have a um, an in, a simple interface. Um, let me see what it is, I guess. I, I did for, for the test are you using yes. the in the server? I think from the is it no, well, one that, that was something I I, I wanted to, to to mention at this moment very you read my mind. Uh, because 
it wasn't possible to use the 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 in the 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 VCGov the classic VCGov in the tail server because uh, for that one you have to use an an in the server because for, for, actually for for two reasons one of the reasons is that uh, you have to to the, the it it checks that the tail file you are adding is actually on the on, uh, belongs actually to to a to a, a, a ledger object, so you have to use a, an in the VDR in the, in the ledger, uh, which is not the, the case of of my test because I'm using an in memory registry. And the other problem is that the in the tail server uh, uses the uh, revocation registry identifier. Uh, in in the in the URI they use. So if you use an 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 in the um, uh, an, an, an unqualified in the identifier, you are good. But if you are using a, a fully qualified identifier, you can have issues because you will have some slashes and on okay. whatever the the anon crest method you have you are using uh, defines so it's it's not it's not easy this is something that also happened to us recently on the areas uh, agented harness that also uh, expects to use unqualified identifiers that work well for the urls but uh, it's not uh, working fine with the fully qualified identifiers and that's why uh, AFJ is not fa is now failing uh, because of their well what Timo has explained it some some uh, minutes ago. So in this case, what what we have is the interface for the tails file service that that's how I call it that allows you to to get the the the, the path of the of the of the tails files you are going to to download. And you have the upload and the download tiles file. We have a, a default implementation that will be used if, if you don't provide to the to the anon crest module any config, configuration parameter that it's working like the implementation we have right now that only supports uh, downloading tiles files. So for the holder, it's, it, it's okay using that because you, we don't need any specific implement, implementation. And uh, as you can see in the upload tile files, it says that only supports tile file downloading. And for the actual, uh, for demonstration or for using it, what I did was to, well, for, for the test, actually we, we have an in-memory tail file service that does nothing, actually uses the, the, the same, the, 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 the same file that we have in the file system because in the test we are going we are we are creating all the tails files that we are using so we will have it uh, we, we will have them in any way so uh, but for the demonstration or for what, what i'm i'm uh, doing right now with did web uh, i have i have added some a, a, a tail server very very basic tail server uh, in, in the samples directory that uh, that provides an endpoint where you can post a tails file and it will give a tails file ID that will be the an, an UID and uh, yeah, we have a, a get for to, to, to get the file it, 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 it is more or less respecting the same interface as as the, the VCGov tail server because it's just getting a file and, 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 and with a file and it will put the hash as a file name, I think. Uh, and the and, and a put, sorry, no, no, not a post, but a put that will receive the file and will it will receive the ID as a, as a parameter as well and it will store it. And, and that's it. We have this server that works and works locally. 
and also the the service implementation that that implements the upload tails tails file method uh, using the tails file id this is where it gener generates the uid for the tails file and with the form data it it will upload the the actual file it will not do any any particular check on a vdr or something so it, it it works like that maybe if we want to to have a a robust implementation of this we will have to to do it i'm not sure why we will need to do all those checks but uh, if we are going if we are on the issuer side but but well if you so i suppose that if you are using a uh, a tail server that is used by different services maybe it can be useful to to make it uh, more secure i don't know and as so, you can see uh, in uh, the question in the, ariel yes. the, sorry uh, the those method for the tail server besides in which module so it's part of which module is it it's a specific module for a tail server or it's part of a anon credits module um the 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 interface for a for a tails file service to, for a generic file service is part of the anon credits module okay and it does not define the way you have to uh, to get or put or whatever details it just gets i will show you the interface again yeah, get and put yeah okay it's or get and yeah because uh, because it sure. just it, it just get as an input the revocation definition the, the the object and and it outputs the the uh, url in the case of the uh, the, the url to, to download it uh, afterwards and in the case of the download it will get, it will give you the, the local path of the file so if you yeah. want to define any kind of uh, tail server you can with this interface you, you you just to implement this interface the, the well the the basic interface the the file the tail service interface and you can do whatever you you want you yeah, are my, not tied to a, to a particular api yeah my, my question was because on the anon quest specification the methods do do not uh, define the tails the tails part right so this is it's not part of the anon credits met method requirement. So, but but here is is included there, right? So there is a a different on that. So if you follow the, the spec, I can just write my my method with just to store all the other objects, but not the tails file. And that maybe the tail files can be a different method, right? That's my my concern. Yeah, but but the the problem is where where should we define the, the, the details file management if, if not from the <laughs> because it's needed for the for the unknown credits, right? So yeah, but maybe it's, it's a misunderstanding between this and the anon credits. I mean we should say something on the anon credits, right? We should raise that also on the on the other uh, working group, probably. Well, okay. I don't know. <laughs> no, because currently, for instance, uh, the in in Akapai, uh, they are using specifically the the in the anon cred uh, the in the tail server, and they are using the the API provided by by it. Uh, of course, that will not work uh, once they. Uh, implement it for for checked or or any other an uncred method so i i guess they will also define a generic interface to allow the issuer to the, to 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 choose their own or 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 the detail server they decide to to use and maybe even they can also specify a a, a particular tail server for each an uncred method that's that's also possible possible to to do in this case we are using the same 
for for all the methods but but you can uh, also actually you can in your implementation of this interface you can also maybe we you, because you receive the revocation relative definition as a parameter maybe we can add also the id uh, so we can uh, from this class we can also decide if we are going to call the, the, the classic VCGOP uh, tail server or, or or another one or maybe we can we can do that. James, hey. it's what uh, wants to yeah. Yeah, I guess a follow-up question to Rodolfo's thing then is is the tail server that you have here um compatible with Akapai, meaning can Akapai use it or is it specifically the methods are only usable by AFJ at this point. Uh, the reason why I ask is because if the methods are only usable by AFJ, then I do think it is a, a, a non-cred standard problem versus a uh, something else. <laughs> no, no, but, but, but that's something I, I want to be clear about is that this is just a sample. The, the, the server I I'm, I I added is a sample that I that it is it's actually not used by the tests uh, suite we, uh, we have. Actually, in the in the test suite we have we 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 have a, an in-memory implementation that actually doesn't use any of this API. If you are if you are going to be an, an issuer using AFJ, you can just need to implement the, this interface and put any server you you want maybe if 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 it's confusing to have this sample uh, tail server in this repository maybe we can we can put it somewhere else and just reference it to i don't know to to any to any, anybody to to know about a working implementation for for this but it's not enforced to use this particular server that, that that's what I, I i want to 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 make clear i'm i'm definitely on board with that i guess my concern is uh over the interoperability between the different frameworks right yeah, yeah. at least the, the how but, to but get the, the the yeah. tails file should be the same similar right i think it's, it's a it's a no, URL, it, right? But to to get to get the to get the tail file, uh, at the moment it is it's the, it's absolutely the same as as in as the case the of the um, the BC gov in the tail server. But still, if you if you this is, this is not on 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 the on the tails file service inter I mean on the AFJ interface. So. This is up to you to implement if you want. If you want to use the 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 the, the VCGov tail server to upload the files, you will need just to to put here all what uh, what you need to to call it. But in, but what's specific, specifying on this on this spec actually is is not so so uh, extensive about that, but. What is specified on the anonymous spec is that the file must be uh, put somewhere that is that uh, in a way that you can get the file by getting the URL, the full URL that you have, and, and you will give the uh, you will get the file. Um, but yeah, that, that's. Uh, that's possible and, and, and actually that work is exactly the same as it, it is working right now. Well, uh, um, uh, and, and about, I don't know if I, if I, <laughs> I was more or less clear on what I was saying or maybe I know that I'm not usually clear about about I I I 
always uh, mix all the several concepts so maybe <laughs> I, I I got you more confused than than, than uh, clear about that but and um, about the, the 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 some other notes I I, I put the here is uh, yeah that for the moment in order to revoke the credentials or to 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 work or to to send to send the notifications, um, we have to use the. I'm sorry for the for revoking credentials. We have to use credentials an uh, API, and it will feel more natural to to use the credentials API to to do so. Uh, but uh, it will need more work to do because um, because well yeah. If, we have to deal with different credential formats and to figure out what what uh, format uh, corresponds to each credential we have we want to revoke and well it can be uh, a bit more uh, complicated to to do but uh, and, and and i'm not sure it will be actually necessary necessary for for the for for all the cases and of course, it will this also depend on some fixes on Angular's arrest because uh, yeah, I found some some bugs uh, on the revocation status list management, especially on the uh, JavaScript side. And I'm still having a, an issue when managing the timestamps that I will I will shortly add. To the issues on the unknown credits arrest because it's not for me this uh, override uh, the, the the revocation intervals override that is, is not is not working at least how I understand uh, it should work but well I I hope we will figure out what the problem is and and we can fix it as soon as possible. I don't know if you have any question or comment. It was very cool, Ariel. Yeah, same. It's very, very nice. This is this is like has been so long on the to do list, and I think really important to finally support all the roles um, fully. So yeah, really eager to get this merged. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I I want to add something else that I didn't mention here. Is about uh, the way the framework works when we are issuing the issuing the cre uh, credentials, you know that when we issue credentials, uh, revocable credentials, we have to assign to them an ID on the revocation status list. Uh, this is done automatically by the revocation by the credential format service, and when the maximum credential number for a, for the current uh, revocation regist uh, registry is reached it will mark it will change the state of the revocation status list uh, the, the revocation registry record uh, to full this is something similar to akapai and um, and then well uh, you will know if you for instance, if, if you from your application listen to the to the repository updates uh, of this particular uh, record type, you can figure out that a revocation status uh, revocation registry was uh, full, so you can create another one. This is this is something that in Akapai is managed automatically, but uh, I think that for the moment it's okay for uh, to to leave to leave also to the to the controller to to do that uh, that logic if they will if they want for the moment when you issue a, cred a revocable credential what the framework does is to to find uh, active uh, revocation registries and it picks the the first one it finds if if it doesn't find any any revocation registry it will throw an error so Maybe you can catch it and, and create it and retry.
So that's that's it for the moment. Cool. Nice. Um, I think we're almost out of time, Dan. So I didn't know if we have time to uh, discuss any of the other topics. Um, let me see. I think. Um, yeah, uh, one thing maybe let's just uh, uh, is that the check integration has been merged in the um, in the uh, uh, today. So when zero for zero is released, that should also be fully supported um, with Anocrats and the Dit Resolver and Registrar. Um, so that's quite cool. Um, the PR did introduce some issues again with the CI, um, and I think it has been fixed because Rai has added larger runners, which is quite nice because the tests now run in under 10 minutes. Um, but yeah, it is probably an issue that somehow it it, it 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 goes out of memory, which I'm not sure if should happen. I mean, it could happen, but it, I think it's like something that has been popping up recently. So maybe it still has something to do with the shared components performance or maybe a memory leak or something. I don't know, but uh, yeah, something to look at. Um, then I think- I'm next. sorry for interrupting. Can I oh, ask yeah. a sh really short question? Uh, it's Renata from DSR previously checked. Uh, is the pull request contains a separate module or it's integrated to existing modules about checked integration? Uh, it's a separate module. Oh, cool. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that's it for this week. I can't attend next week due to IW. I don't know if other people are also attending. Um, if somebody wants to take over hosting the meeting, then um, please reach out to me. Uh, if not i'm going to cancel the meeting so let me know i think it can go through if somebody wants to host uh but i think a lot of our team is there and i think also others so yeah uh need to see cool thanks everyone thank you thank you, thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. thanks goodbye thank you bye thank you bye